Well, my name is Adam Thompson. I'm the division chair for health and human performance. And I'm big on outcomes. Uh, one of the things I get asked the most um, when students come in, same as one of the other gentlemen talked about open door policies and students will come in and just ask questions. They want to know where they're going, what these majors lead to. And so what we try to do is just kind of give an idea of where potentially you could land with these majors. These are not exhaustive lists, but it does give you kind of a snapshot where a lot of very popular careers that students pursue land after going into it. Um, I love what Mark and Steve and Tom all said about some of the, the facets of what they do and how they're evidenced in lots of careers. But when you look at sports management, it's the business of sport. It's a global language. It's not going anywhere anytime soon. It's here to stay. Where do you want to partner in that is where this major leads. And these guys are absolutely right. You may need to specialize in graduate school or find a specialty certification or licensure outside of the degree, but that may not be required. Does it make you more marketable or give you more kind of power in the positions of where you want to go? Absolutely. But it doesn't have to happen all at once. Uh, when I was in your seat, if you would have told me this is what I'd be doing, I'd probably have laughed at you and called your names. It was not the tra career trajectory. But as I got into things, I started to see where I had more options looking at lists like this. So when you look at sports management, those are all things that have potential through that, but there's a lot of things that have to happen first. One, get the degree and then get some experience. And then obviously to grow your kind of a pool of people that can vouch for you and be your larger organization. And you can branch from that, depending on what you're interested in. Um, it's very much, I would call, a generalist start or knowledge base when you talk about sports management. And you can do so much with that. Um, similar to what the guys have talked about, we have students that land all over the place. It's an incredible blessing and a lot of fun to kind of keep touch and keep in communication with them about what they're doing and where they're going. And we learn all the time, as the market changes, we're able to adapt the major and coursework to benefit them so they continue to get those great positions. Um, exercise science is very similar in that if you want to just go at the baccalaureate level, that's fine. There are a lot of options there. But it also prepares you that if you want to leave to graduate school and specialize, there are options from that. A lot of times when you take that intro to extra science class, it presents all these different career, career fields, which some you're completely not interested in, and other ones you're like, that's what I'm interested in most. I want to pursue that. And so it talks about some of the different options and we have a disclaimer that you may have to go on to graduate school. Um, I'm an athletic trainer. I love sports medicine. I'm a trauma junkie. Uh, if you, I don't want you to get hurt, but if you do, I want to be there because I want to fix it. That's just how I'm wired. I thought I was going to work for a surgeon the rest of my life. I was going to work in a hospital or a clinic and work in surgery and just keep doing that. It was a lot of fun. Um, I also found it very stressful. And I also found that the population base I was working with wasn't super engaged to get healthy when you work with a geriatric population or a very fearful pediatric population. I was like, no, I think I need to be within those 16 to 26 year olds that are highly ambitious and trained and fit and dedicated, and they just want to get back on the field course support as fast as possible. Um, still wasn't pursuing academia whatsoever. Yet, uh, I think Steve just said that about doctors make a lot and teachers don't make as much, absolutely. Doctors don't get time off like teachers either. And I tell you, as they get older, that's worth money. I'll take it any day of the week. But it shows you where it branches off. And I believe Dr. Tripp talked about um, some of the different careers here. So I'm just going to pull down where you can see pre-PT, pre-OT, and then pre-AT. Those are just very popular outcomes where students will get an exercise science degree and go to physical therapy school occupational therapy school. And now after training in sports medicine is leaving the undergraduate as preparation into the profession and now going to the graduate. A lot of health science professions have done this. Um, some call it professional creep, but you've seen where PT used to be at the baccalaureate level, now it's at the clinical doctor level. OT is the same way, they're at masters pushing the doctor, clinical doctor level. Um, now you're probably familiar with OTA or PTA, where you have a, P, a physical therapy assistant, it used to be an associate's degree, and they're pushing hard to make it a baccalaureate degree. So you always have this push where you see that happen, and those are very popular ones, depending on where you want your outcome to be. 
Sports ministry is when we get to partner with the school of theology ministry. Very popular in that I love sport, I love ministry, but I want to go and do it with the camp. I want to do it with athletes in action. I want to go to Canica or Spring Hill and actually change the world and breathe Christ into someone, but in a different context than being a pastor in church. You're just a pastor on the field. It's just a different lens that you're actually getting the gospel to people. And that's one that people have really, it's become incredibly popular since we added it here. Um, Dr. Burson does a great job kind of leading that program, and we partner with them with these courses. But essentially, when you look at some of these outcomes, like I said, it's not an exhaustive list, but it gives you an idea of where you're going. And similar to Dr. Tripp with the open door policy, that's where we have the conversation of how do you want to get there? What steps you should take to get there? And then we kind of guide through that because um, I know that you get in the portal and you see these four-year plans. I don't know if you've ever seen anyone that has a carbon copy four-year plan from one student to the next. It's diverse and changing all the time. You bring in coursework, you change your major three times, and yet there's still a lot of winding roads that can lead to these outcomes and get you there. And I've seen the ones that, on paper, don't follow a normal trajectory and still have a fantastic outcome. Dr. Tripp showed where you have all these uh, medical careers, and yet we've had students that majored uh, in the arts and ceramics and went to physical therapy school. And I'm like, I'm not sure how that fits, but they did fantastic. Um, I had a student years ago who was a voice major. She could sing with the best of them, and she became a chiropractor. And I'm like, are you going to like use melody to heal your patient? She was good at it. So don't think it has to be a certain trajectory, especially if you cut your road kind of winds around a little bit and some of the different things. Um, we have minors that, especially if these majors don't quite light your fire or interest you, where some people will partner a coaching education minor onto something, um, another major at the university, or they'll do a health and wellness minor or a rec and camp administration minor, in that they really have a major they love, but they want to partner something with it as well. Um, I have a biology minor. I also have a physical education minor. And I'm not in either of those type of disciplines with what I do as an athlete trainer in sports med, but they were things I was interested in at the time. Um, so it just really depends. These, um, I would even argue that our, our division's fairly narrow as far as our trajectories um, with what we offer, but that's a funnel until you can actually get out the other side and then specialize in all the different options. Just that common core or professional knowledge base is fairly structured so that when you get out, you can really specialize and diversify from there. I want to leave time for questions because we got four different groups to talk to. So.